so hey guys this is Trevor here so today we'll be solving uh, one of the problems from the code forces round uh, that is uh, this edge weight assignment so what does the problem states the problem states will be given a tree something like this and obviously the tree has n vertices so if it has n vertices it will obviously have n minus one edges so let's say you're given this tree so there will be a number of edges so what you need to do is in every edge you got to assign some weights so like over here they have assigned four four five four five so after assigning you need to be very sure that the that the values in the path between leaves should give zor as zero let's say from one to two so the path has four and four so four zor four should be zero from one to six the path has four five four five so the zor has to be zero from two to six the path has four five four five the zor has to be zero so the task is you can assign values to every edge and you can assign any values as large as this but you got to be very sure that between any leaf the zor path has to be zero so you got to find what is the minimum number of distinct weights you can assign and the maximum number of distinct weights now when i say minimum that means if you see over here that's four five four five four so you are assigning two distinct that is four and five and you are spreading them across the tree such that the bitwise zor between every leaf is zero but if you want the maximum you can see over here you have assigned one two four seven so the maximum distinct weights you have assigned is four that is one two four seven and still these all remains zero so the task is you have to assign weight but then once you have to assign weights such that you get minimum number of distinct and the other way is you have to assign weights so that you get maximum number of distinct but then you don't have to print the weights you just got to print what is the minimum number of weights you can assign and the maximum number of distinct weights that you can assign so let's quickly look at this example two if you look at this example so they have assigned one one two three three so if you look at zor between one and two this or is again zero from one and two uh, from zor from one to five is one two three that is zero from one to six again zero from two to six again zero so we can say a minimum of three numbers have been assigned similarly you can find for the maximum the maximum will again be a three itself if you look at this because there is no other way to assign more than three over here such that the uh, bitwise or between weights of all edges should be zero so before doing this you got to be aware of some of the zor properties so let's look at those let's take n equal to six and i ask you what is the minimum number of distinct weights that you can place in this six places such that the zor is zero so you will easily say the minimum number is one we will place x x x x x x and we know xor 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 will always be zero why because even number of same elements gives or as zero for even it is very easy so if n is even minimum is one but what if n is five that is odd so let's take simply three and then let's take two so how many times uh, since you've taken one number so there are four times left to take so what you do is you take two thrice and for the fifth time take one so you eventually see the zor is zero because you know if there are even number of set bits at any of the bit positions so the zor tends out to be zero if all the bits are zero so we can say if n is odd the minimum numbers that we can take is three so we have done for minimum zor for in particular sequence not for the tree so let's now check out what is the maximum one so if i give you n equal to six so what is the maximum number of distinct elements that you can take so what you'll do is place on five bits then the next bit will be this then the third number will be this and the fourth number will be this then the fifth number will be this and then the sixth number becomes this so eventually you can see at, at every bit there are even number of bits so you can say the zor is zero so we can say if n is even we can take the number of numbers to be six itself that is the maximum number of distinct integers you can take but if n is equal to two there lies a case you cannot take that because if you take something like this this will never give you zor as zero this will give you zero but this will give you one so n equal to two is a special case where the number of answer is one let's take n equal to five so similarly you do the same thing place four and you get the zor as zero so for n equal to five the answer also stays five we know if there is a sequence of length n the maximum number of distinct integers that we can put is n bearing n equal to 2 where we can only put 1 so we know for a sequence now let's uh, turn this down for the tree so for tree we know we got to check between leaf distance so if there are let's say x leaf so there will be x square pairs so you got to check between every pair if the distance is even in everywhere 
then we can say the answer of minimum will be 1 because we just now proved the answer is 1 if the distance is even everywhere. But if the distance is odd, what will be the answer? 3. We have proved it right now. But how do you check the distance to be even and odd? Since there will be x square pairs and at worst case, your tree might look something like this. So at worst case, a root can have n minus 1 leaves. So if it has n minus 1 leaves, uh, the number of leaf pairs will be n square. So if you check out the value of n, that's 10 to the power 5. So the number of pairs will become 10 to the power 5 square. So it's not possible to check for every pair. So you got to think of something better. So what is that better? So let's assume there are 5 leaves. So what you do is you keep one leaf constant and then check it with all the other 4 leaves. If all of them are even, you can print 1. If any of them is odd, if any of the distance is odd, we will print 3. So you might argue you're only checking from one leaf and you're not checking between this leaf and this leaf or this leaf and this leaf. So I'll prove it by contradiction. Now since you are keeping this leaf as constant and you're checking from here to here which distance is even and again from here to here the distance is even. So how are you assuring that these two leaves distance have been checked? So let's assume the distance is odd over here. So if this is odd, I can very much assure that this is also odd. So if this is odd, this portion has to be odd because the entire thing is even. So you know this portion is odd, this portion is odd. So eventually odd plus odd will give you even. So I've proved for the odd contradiction. Let's prove for the even one too. So let's assume this is even. I know the entire thing is even. The entire thing from here to here is also even because I'm checking from one leaf itself. So if this is even, this has to be even. Now if this is even, the entire thing is even. So this has to be even. Now even plus even will always give you even. So that is the reason if you keep a leaf constant and check for other leaves and all of them are even, I can for sure say the distance between any of the two leaves will be even. So I've proved it by contradiction. So if this is the tree, you start from one of the leaves. Let's say I started from here. So one, two, three, four, four, two. So you can eventually see the distance is two, the distance is four and the distance is four. So from here to every leaf, the distance is even none of the distance are odd. So I can very much say the distance between two will also be even. Distance between them will also be even. So I can say the minimum since the distance is even, I'll put out one. But if any of the distance were odd, the minimum will be three. So we had solved the question for the minimum. So let's check how you solve for the maximum one. So since we know if there are n minus one edges, let's say I give you three something as this. And I ask you what is the answer of the maximum distinct ways that you can fill. You will say the answer is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 because there are 6 edges. So I can fill 6 maximum distinct numbers. So why did you say that? Because it was basically a simple straight line that is, and we proved that if the length is n. So we can put a maximum of 6 numbers over here. But then how do you extend this to a tree? So let's check out. So what we do initially is we assign distinct numbers to every possible edge. So the number of edges is n minus one. So we assign n minus one edges. We assign distinct numbers to every possible edge. So what is the total number of edges? That is n minus one. So we assign n minus one distinct numbers. Now we will use exclusion principle. So if we see at this portion or take this portion or take this portion. So let's write this. I'm just writing this portion. So can I say I am not allowed to take three distinct numbers? because that will eventually make this zone not to be zero. So if I'm taking this as X, I have to take this as X also. And I have to take this as X. I'm taking this as Y, I have to take this as Y also. If I'm taking this as Y, I'm taking this as to Y. Again, if I'm taking this as Y, this has to be Y, this has to be Y. Similarly, over here, if I'm taking this as Z, this has to be Z. Means this edge and this edge, where it should be similar. Otherwise, their zone will not be zero. Because we read N equal to 2 is an exception where we can take only one distinct number. So what are the things that will be excluded? So we can say the number of leaves will be excluded because every leaf will have one edge. So that edge will be excluded. So we exclude the number of leaves. But beneath this node, we are using one Y. So there is one distinct number that you are using. So eventually we can say that we can count X2. What is X? The number of nodes which have a minimum of one leaf because we are excluding leaves, right? We are excluding all of the leaves. But we can say there is at least one distinct number that is y, y, y or z over here or let's say a over here, let's say b over here. There is one distinct numbers beyond beneath this branch of leaves, right? If this is a, this has to be a, this has to be a. 
So this one has to be counted. So if we count the number of nodes, which has a minimum of one leaf, that is X, we will get our answer. Because apart from that, every distinct edge is independent of other edges. Only this leaf edges are dependent because we got to be assured that bitwise or is zero. Hence the answer trims down to n minus one. We exclude the leaves and then we include the nodal nodes which have a minimum of one children. So guys, let's look at uh, the code. So you take the graph as the input. After that, what you do is you store all the leaf nodes. Now, what are the leaf nodes? Uh, the leaf nodes will be those nodes whose adjacency list size will be one because they will only have this parent. So you have stored all the leaf nodes once you have done that. Now you also uh, try to find the root. Why? Because it might help you afterwards because when you are calculating uh, this nodal nodes, uh, DFS from the root will help. So just store the root as of now. So what is the root? Any of the nodes which has a adjacency less size of greater than one. So you store the leaf. Then you call the DFS from one of the leaves. So what you do is you start from your zero, one, two, two, three, four. Eventually you are calculating the distance from it. So let's look at the DFS. So it's very easy. Just pass on a level and you can increase the level. So you can store it in a DPRM. Once you've done that, what is the next thing that you need to do for the minimum check? You got to check if the distance from that leaf to every leaf is odd or even. So if any of them is odd, we know if any of them is odd, the answer will be three. But if all of them are even, the minimum stays as one. So you can print the minimum. Now what is the answer for this? N minus one edges are got for the maximum. And then you subtract the leaf because total number of leaves has been stored. So leaf dot size will give you the number of leaves. You got to add X. So what is X? Number of nodal nodes which have children greater than one. So you call the DFS from the root and calculate. So it travels for all its adjacent nodes for a node and you check among all the adjacent nodes, how many are children? So we know if there is a minimum of one children, it's a nodal. So we will count number of nodes which have a minimum of one children. So that is X. So eventually you get X and we add it to the answer. So in this way, we can find out the minimum and the maximum. So what is the time complexity for DFS? The time complexity will be O of N and for Storing it, the space complexity will be n plus e. And if you look at the constraint, it's 10 to the power 5. So it satisfies it properly. So guys, this was all about this code forces problem. In the next video, I'll be again discussing about another code forces D problem. Till then, uh, just press on the bell icon so that you get notified. And do subscribe to my channel too. Thank you.